you can't afford to ignore the front page of the newspaper in favor of the business section. That's something I always preached back when I ran my own hedge fund, because far too often the big sell-offs, often like the one we had in the last hour, were caused by something that broke on page one of the New York Times, not something in section D of the same paper. Classic example today. The French Parliament declared the Chinese oppression of the Uyghur Muslim people a crime against humanity. You don't level a charge of genocide against the largest country on earth, one that's the largest importer of French goods, unless you're willing to pick a fight. Personally, I reject investing in a country that's committing ongoing crimes against humanity. The same way I protested Harvard's tacit support for apartheid South Africa by refusing to invest stocks of companies that did business there when I graduated. We need to keep the Uyghur issue front and center, not just because it's an atrocity, but because of the worldwide escalation in rhetoric against China. When former President Trump took a bellicose stance on trade, not many other countries were willing to cooperate. But human rights, that's a horse of a different color. Because this is mad money, we have to ask what it means for the stock market. First off, my charitable trust has a big position in Boeing. Now, I've been hopeful that China will come through with big orders as an olive branch gesture, in part because they desperately actually need the planes. But it's hard to imagine that happening if things are getting more contentious. Second, the Taiwan issue. I don't think that China is crazy enough to invade, probably, but they could disrupt Taiwanese shipping to put pressure on them. That's a problem because our economy is way too reliant on Taiwan's semiconductor. We need to see a rapid diversification away from Taiwan with more homegrown chips, perhaps with the help of the Commerce Department's semiconductor initiative. Third, we have to keep in mind that China itself may be on thinner ice, with their central bank cutting interest rates to prop up the ailing real estate market. They're not in great shape there. Of course, it's not just China. There's also Russia, which increasingly seems like it wants to actually invade Ukraine. This is a tricky situation. Vladimir Putin wants to make Ukraine a Russian client state, or maybe carve off a chunk of it like he did with Crimea several years ago. Ideally, he wants to claim that native Russians need his help, or that Ukraine provokes some sort of military response, which they probably haven't, at some sort of border place that we don't know about. The question is, will the U.S. and our allies have a united front against Russia if they try to pull something? Look, we know that the German government won't even commit to holding construction of a new Russian natural gas pipeline. Forget serious sanctions uh, or military action. Germany gets a ton of its energy from Russia, so they're in an economic hostage situation. Now, unlike with China, our country doesn't have a ton of commerce with Russia, so the impact would be hard to figure out. But I have to believe that rising tensions will be an ongoing issue. I don't think our government would go to war unilaterally to save Ukraine. But if the rest of NATO is on board, well, that would be a different story. Meanwhile, if our government ever decides to take state-sponsored cybersecurity seriously, it would need the help of our best cybersecurity companies. So always keep one eye on Palo Alto networks. If that spikes, maybe something's going on. Sometimes these existential issues grip the entire market, as was the case in the last hour of today's trading, when we were all trying to figure out if there were rumors of war. Not war, just rumors of it. And yes, I'm not forgetting to follow the course of COVID at all times. You want to know what could happen. Think the Thanksgiving Giving Day massacre last year because of Omicron. But you also want to know if the pandemic is truly peaking. That's a worldwide problem. So look to the New York Times homepage, not the business section, to get the real answers. I'd like to say there's always a bull market somewhere. And I promise to try to find it just for you right here on Mad Money. I'm Jim Kramer. See you tomorrow. The news with Shepard Smith starts now.